Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to learn to play the violin with natural weight. It's something that I, I see a lot of people when they first start playing the instrument. They, they play with pressure instead of weight, and this, this can last for many years. I personally did not learn how to play with natural weight for the first eight years of playing the violin. And I actually never really enjoyed playing the violin that much for those eight years because the sound was never beautiful. Um, so one of, one of the first things I do as a teacher is I, I teach someone how to play with natural weight if, if they're not already because that's what allows you to feel comfortable, natural on the instrument, and also make a, make a nice sound. And it's, violin is just so much fun to play if, if you can have a nice sound. And I realize that you don't need eight years to find out how to play and make a nice sound. You, you could do it from the very first day you pick up the instrument. It's, it's just a matter of learning how to play with natural weight. I find uh, one of the easiest ways to first feel, just how does it feel to have that natural weight is first go go sit on a couch that has a armrest and just allow your arm to just fall on that armrest and feel how does that feel. That's, that's just having all your weight of your arm down in, into something. Or you can try it with standing as the next step with let's say an upright piano or a, or a cabinet or a music stand and you can you can feel that as well then the next step is how do, how do we feel that when all we're contacting is is our hand we don't we can't let our elbow rest onto something now that presents a little bit more of a challenge one way i find is is quite easy uh, for people to find their weight is bring your violin a little bit low and put your bow on the string in a way where you can feel that same way you felt like this where your arm is relaxing into your body your elbow is against your body your hand is active so you're feeling you can move up and down like this. You're, you're feeling the weight from your elbow to your hand is, is going into the violin right now. Then move around a little bit, maybe make sure you are just allowing that arm to drop. So right now basically my hand is energized, nothing else is at all energized. The top part of the arm completely relaxed just bottom part of the forearm is activated to, to activate the hand. Then the next step, all you have to do is you just slightly, see if you can raise your elbow a little bit and feel how the weight then transfers more into your hand and into the violin. You'll feel your, your hand will have to activate a little bit to transfer that weight a little more. So you can, you can do that until you find it. What's happening on a, on a body level, what's happening with your muscles, is this muscle right here just activates. Not up here. This does not activate at all. Only, only this muscle will activate a tiny bit to just allow that elbow to move up and a little bit out from the body. So shoulders completely down, your traps uh, not involved at all. Then once you have that, you can pull a bow. And it may scratch a bit, especially if you move too slowly, it'll just, that's, that's what'll have a really crunch. So to, to satisfy yourself, when you, when you first pull the bow, see that you have enough speed that it can sound decent. You can also try another string. And so that, 
I find is is uh, is a very easy way that people can learn to play with weight, even if um, they haven't really played the instrument yet. Um, next step is do the same thing with a normal uh, hold of of the instrument. So again, you can do the same thing. You won't be able to feel it as well that your arm is just relaxing in your body, but see if you can feel it the same way, and then lift the elbow, and then just do the same thing. And you can try it on different strings. E string, you'll let the weight actually move the bow too, like it's, a, like it's an avalanche a little bit. So the bow, the weight will actually allow the arm to swing down a little bit, and then you have to pick the arm up again on, on the way up. The G string, it'll be more like sitting the whole time. It'll feel quite a lot like this, where you're just pulling and pushing the bow side to side. And of course, we're usually not going to play with all our arm weight like that. But we can if if we are playing with a lot of bow speed and we want to be really loud. Um, anything that's less than that, it'll be like resting on something and then feeling that you pick your arm up just a little bit. But mo but some of the weight is still down. And again, that's just that's just this activating a little bit to do that. You never want to activate up here unless you're setup is that you really have to get your arm way up here on the G string otherwise you shouldn't have to use that um, in, in general of course you'll use it here and there so then you can try picking up a little bit of that weight probably notice that you can't have so much of your arm weight at the frog but you can have a lot of weight down here um, when you're at the tip maybe I should say up here so that's that's kind of the way where I would first just teach so that someone can learn how does it feel to be playing with really just natural weight um, if you want to know how does it feel to play with pressure, you go to something like this, and then you imagine this kind of motion squeezing in, and that's that that's gonna make a sound like you know where you're just pressing an instrument, but hopefully you'd learn how to just feel the weight relax and the breath will be important for that. And then see it, it'll sound very different. Um, and you'll feel more comfortable. Um, and that'll also be very much connected to your breath. Breath will be connected with how you feel. So, so actually learning to play with weight will totally make your whole experience much, much better on the violin. Now I want to show you a, uh, an exercise I learned after playing the violin for eight years, um, sadly not earlier, um, that, that is very helpful for um, learning how to play with weight. So now that we've figured out how it feels, go to the frog. I, I usually like to start on D string. It, it just feels the most natural for the arm um, when you're dealing with weight. E string is complicated because the weight has to be very involved with the movement of the bow as well. Um, some people, they know how to play with weight on D string, but E string, they try to feel the same way. And then it sounds like that because it's not is not involved in the movement. The weight needs to be involved in the movement. Just like if you're on a slide and going down the slide, 
that weight is picking up speed. Um, that's how the bow is on the E string. Then the G string, a lot of times, if your arm has to be super high, uh, this muscle does have to engage a little bit. Um, you don't have to, you can bring your arm up to about here without engaging this at all. And then it needs to engage a little bit. So um, that can make things a little more confusing. But it's good to know. So for the exercise, you kind of, you can move your elbow. Once you're sitting on the string, you try to get your weight, all your natural weight onto the string. You can do this again if you want. Rest against your body and then pick up the elbow. And then we're going to, we're going to stop like this against the string without moving the bow. We're going to stop like this, uh, a few times throughout the bow. First, let's pull the bow four times until we're at the tip. So we've just gone about a quarter of the bow. And if at first you crunch a little bit, that's, that's fine. You'll be very, it'll be very easy to get rid of that crunch. But what's not easy is learning to play with weight. And each time we stop, you recheck that your arm feels uh, comfortable that you feel that weight. Also, with your hand, you're engaging the fingers you need to engage and you're not engaging the fingers you don't need to engage. And you'll notice how that changes through each of these points. As we go through the tip, you have to engage uh, your pointing finger and second finger a little more and also the thumb as more weight goes in. Also, once you're out here, your back of the hand is just resting on the bow. Um, it, you, you can tell it doesn't need to put any weight into the bow at all. And then slowly as you go lower in the bow again, you'll feel a little bit of more of the back of the hand involved in that weight transfer. Here, you feel much less weight into the, into the first and second finger. And then here, you'll feel quite a bit of weight into the back of the hand, into the pinky, into the ring finger. And now we're going to do three times, uh, three bows. Sorry, we're going to stop. Yeah, three times until the tip. I think you know what I mean. So there's a third of the bow. And while you're doing this, make sure you're staying comfortable. Make sure you're taking your time. Some people I show this exercise to and they start suddenly going so fast they can't really feel their weight in between the bows. And then two per bow. And then the whole bow. Remember to check the hand. That it's always changing each of these points in the, in the weight distribution and how active the hand is. Here, it doesn't have to be that active anywhere. Feel how the hand has to be different. Activation. And there, that's, that's doing one string. You can do this on uh, all the strings. And maybe I'll just show you a little bit of the E string, how it, how it feels a little bit different. Also something you can think about is you have the weight down and every time you move the bow, think of a little bit arc of, of weight. You lift the weight up a little bit for the bow to ring and then you come back down. And then again, the weight, you let it release a little bit 
to move the bow on the way down. And now we're going uphill. And then we're going to go downhill again. Probably the one that takes the most concentration is just going this downhill on the E string because you just really have to let go. Like you can do that and, and then see how the sound will really ri start ringing if you are just allowing that arm to fall. So there you have it. You see how it's 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 very much a, a physical um, exercise, like you're doing yoga or something, just to feel everything relax in in the right way. Um, and so, really allow yourself to start breathing more deeply. As you see, I did. I almost had to 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 do that the the right and relaxed way. Um, and in the beginning of doing this exercise, um, if it's helping you to play with weight, I would say just don't worry about the little crunches here and there. Um, and eventually, it's, it's very easy to manage that. Um, so, if, if you're learning to play with weight and you haven't for a long time, or you've never played the violin before and you're trying this out, I would, I would recommend doing this every day, uh, maybe the first thing you do. Um, it's very easy to go from this exercise to then... Just long tones. It also, just the way you pause all the time, it'll help you learn how to have a more straight bow as well. Um, but I would recommend doing that going from four, three, two, one on every string and and that's that's your that's your exercise. And four I'm talking about two, three, four, or one. Sorry, I'm not not the best to explain exactly what that is, but you understand it. Um and yeah, if you need to always go back to this. I find if, if you have been playing a long time without using natural weight, your habits will come back always. So you'll have to do this even more. Um, so yeah, this, this exercise, I was very lucky to learn from my teacher, Moses Pogosian, who I studied with many years. Um, I started this in high school actually. And very soon I was playing with weight and starting to enjoy the instrument much more. So um, I hope this helps and thank you for watching.